My Lords, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. The Hebrew word for Holocaust is Shoah. Shoah is a biblical term which literally means a fierce wind. So what does the Holocaust have in common with a strong wind such as a hurricane? When people in a particular locality are given advanced warning that a hurricane is about to strike, there can be a number of reactions. There will be those who simply won't believe it. They'll say, look outside, the sky is blue, the atmosphere is tranquil. Is it possible that within 24 to 48 hours, there will be an enormous upheaval with fiercely strong winds? Probably these winds will die down before they hit the shore. And then there are others who might say, okay, so it will affect us, but it certainly won't be as bad as what they are predicting. Then there'll be others who'll say, Perhaps it will affect neighboring provinces, cities, and towns. But surely it won't hit us. While there'll be others who will heed the warnings, pick up their bags, and flee for their lives. And once the hurricane arrives, it will not differentiate between men and women, old and young, good and bad. All those who are there will be equally affected. There'll be those who'll be killed, some seriously injured, and then there'll be survivors who will tell the story of what transpired. And when people come back on a visit to return to their towns and villages and cities, they simply won't believe what they witness, the sheer and utter state of destruction. In the 1930s, the warning signs were there, but we can totally understand the Jews of Europe who said, surely such unspeakable evil will never affect us. Or perhaps a holocaust of sorts might arrive, but it won't be as bad as some are predicting. Could there actually be an attempt for a final solution for the Jewish people on earth? There were those who said it might affect other areas and not ours, while there were few in number who said, let's uproot ourselves and flee for our lives. And when the Holocaust arrived, it did not differentiate between men and women, old and young, religious and irreligious. It affected us all. Six million perished, including more than a million children. And when we returned to those sites, once thriving areas of Jewish life in Europe, all we encounter are destroyed communities. Now you might have thought that in the wake of the Second World War and the horrific suffering within it, the world would have learned a lesson. You might have thought that our ears would be attuned to the warning signals. And yet, despite what occurred through the Holocaust, genocides have taken place in Cambodia and Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. Such atrocities should never have happened. We should never have allowed them to take place, yet they did, while many stood idly by. This year's theme for Holocaust Memorial Day is journeys. Our participants in today's ceremony will take us through journeys of persecution, telling the stories of millions who suffered. We will hear about journeys of escape. Many brave and courageous men and women tried to escape. Some survived, many died. And then we will also hear about journeys of return and the rebuilding of life. But I believe that it is important that together we engage in a fourth journey. The Holocaust, without any doubt, was the defining event of the 20th century, a historic episode that shook to the very core the foundations of 
modern civilization. And consequently, it is important that together we engage in a journey of remembrance, to remember the evil, to remember the suffering, to remember the pain, to remember the heroism of many wonderful and outstanding people, to remember the inactivity, and to remember the irresponsibility. Once we remember in this way, there is hope that together we can guarantee that the world will never see such suffering again. Together with thousands around the world today on Holocaust Memorial Day, let us strive to guarantee that the winds of political and social change will never again produce the winds of destruction.